Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm so excited to bring you another horror wrap up. I have a great variety. There are diverse books, there are page turners, I have some really good recommendations. And most importantly, I'm including a book that I have tried to read on four different occasions and have finally finished. And it's quite an accomplishment. The book ended up being worth all of the trouble that it caused me. And you know what? Let's get started and I'll tell you all about it. So the first book I want to talk about is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This was a book that was everywhere in 2020. It was on so many best of the year lists and I wanted so badly to read and enjoy it. And I struggled when I first picked it up. I tried to read this book three times before this fourth attempt when I finally finished it. If you're not aware of the plot, it is a story that follows a group of indigenous men living in America and they are Blackfoot Indian. And years ago, they all went on a hunting expedition. Something went wrong. And now years later, they are finding that something is coming after them. And they believe that because they were all linked together by this hunting trip, they believe that it is based off of that and something is getting revenge on them. I want to leave this really vague because it is best going into this one without knowing too much. And I will say that what originally tripped me up with this book was the writing. I think that Stephen Graham Jones is a very good writer. He has a literary style to his work. And with that, it can just be a little bit tricky for me to get into. I just find the way he writes stories just doesn't always work with my brain. And particularly with this one, I struggled a lot with the language in the actual character's speech patterns because their dialect was, of course, very reminiscent of the slang used on reserves, but it just didn't work with my brain very well. So I tried reading this once, I put it down, I tried reading again, put it down, and a third time, etc. This last time I actually tried the audiobook version. I received a review copy from Simon Schuster Canada, which I attempted to read, but the copy that I actually finished reading was the audiobook version from Libro FM. I received a review copy from them as well. And that is my recommendation how to consume this book book if you were like me and have a little bit of trouble getting into the narrative because I had trouble getting started but once I got used to it I got really pulled into the story and I do think that the narration really helped with that. This was done by an own voices narrator, someone who is Indigenous himself, and I really thought that he brought the voices and the characters to life and just made the dialect make sense for me. And again, once I got pulled into the story, I was very invested. The horror in the story is fantastic. People have been gushing about those aspects, and I would agree. The horror is both psychological and also a bit gruesome because it does involve the hunt and you have this elk entity that keeps showing up and it was really good because you don't quite know if it's in the characters' minds or is it really happening and in some ways it's subtle but in other ways, like I said, it's actually quite gruesome so keep that in mind if you're going to pick up this book but I just thought it was so well done and along similar lines, what I really liked about this book is the way that it addressed a lot of issues or prejudice and stereotypes surrounding Indigenous people in North America because the author does some fantastic social commentary but it's done in a really clever way that fits the narrative. It all ties in and of course this whole conversation is centered around traditional hunting versus modern practices and life on reserve and there's so much I like about this book. I've said before I really like Indigenous fiction. It's something very close to my heart and I thought that this one was very well done. It just was a little bit challenging for me to get into, but so worth it overall and would definitely recommend it to anyone who has not yet read this book. It really was worth the hype when it came out and was definitely worth my time reading. Next, I want to talk about Bone White by Ronald Malfi, and this is a horror thriller that is set in a town of Alaska. Right at the beginning of the story, a man shows up, he is disheveled, and he walks into a diner and basically confesses that he is responsible for murdering a whole bunch of people and burying their bodies over the past few years by this Alaskan in town. They call in the police and sure enough they find the bodies. Most of the story is told from the perspective of a man 
man whose brother went to this Alaskan town years ago and was never seen again. Because of the connection with this serial killer, he is called in to provide his DNA and possibly find out if his brother is among the dead. And the story goes from there, as I always say. And this is one I really enjoyed. It is such a page turner. If you're looking for a book that will just suck you in from the first page, this is it. I had no trouble with the narrative. I've said before, and I will say it again, that I really think that Ronald Melfi is an excellent narrator and specifically an excellent storyteller because I just found the setup for this to be so intriguing and I liked where the story went. I liked the meaning behind Bone White. This book is dark and has devil imagery and it's just wonderful and creepy and it's told over parts so you just keep getting pulled along in the plot and I just flew through this book. So again, if you're looking for something fast paced, maybe you're in a reading slump, this is an excellent one to pick up. Next, I want to talk about The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. This is a post-apocalyptic story told from the perspective of a teenage girl who is surviving after there is this viral outbreak that is called the cough, and she was going off with her family to go and go to their grandmother's house, which was in the woods, in order to survive and avoid the plague that is going around and avoid the quarantine sites, which are basically causing more outbreaks. At the point the story where we first meet her. She is actually by herself, so the story is told in the present day as well as flashbacks to when her and her family were leaving. As you might be able to tell from the title of this book, this is very much inspired by the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, and I am not someone who likes fairy tale retellings. This is probably the first adult retelling I've actually finished as far as I can remember, and so keep in mind that even if you don't like retellings like me, this one might actually work for you. And for me it worked because it went so far from where the story starts. You can see the structure of it and they make good nods to the wolf and the grandmother's house and the fact that she wears this red hoodie. But beyond that, the story is so much more. I also should mention that I don't normally like post-apocalyptic horror. Certainly I have read some before and sometimes I like it but it's never my favorite genre. While I'm calling this horror, it is also a bit of science fiction, like post-apocalyptic stories always kind of fall between those two lines, but I felt that this one fell more on the horror side of things, certainly towards the end, and you also don't get a lot of backstory on the virus itself. Again, you know that it causes a cough, so it's respiratory, but besides that, you really don't find out much about it, which I tend to think of science fiction post-apocalyptic stories as more focused on, again, Again, the science, while this is more about the horror of the situation, the breakdown of society, and what people do and how people act in these terrible situations. I really liked Red as a main character. She was truly one of those tough kick butt girls, and I liked that she wasn't a soft character. There also was some great diversity in this book. While it wasn't technically an own voices story, the main character was biracial, which is referenced in many situations of how that affects her life, and she also is an amputee from a previous accident prior to the apocalyptic event and you get to see again how people treat her differently because of that and I just thought she was such a strong character. I got really pulled into the story and of course this was a really interesting one to read in the post 2020 COVID world so I highly recommend this one. I have read Christine Henry before. I really love The Ghost Tree and I'm definitely going to be reading more of her books because yeah, I think that she is probably the exception to my rule about no retellings because she seems to know how to do them right. So I definitely want to check out more of her work. I would love to hear your recommendations down below. Which of her retellings are your favorite? Finally, we have a middle grade horror novel, and that is One for Sorrow by Mary Downing Hahn. And this is a story that is set at the beginning of the 1900s during the influenza and the First World War. It's set in America and follows a young schoolgirl who goes to a new school and starts to make friends. At first, she meets a girl that clings onto her and tries to make her her best friend, but she doesn't really like this other girl. She is not very attractive, she's smelly, she's a bit of a 
tattletale and is just causing her a lot of trouble. So the main character breaks off from her and ends up hanging out with the popular girls instead. And of course they end up bullying the other girl. And this other girl, the unpopular one, ends up dying due to the flu. This is right in the synopsis. I'm not spoiling anything. And basically she comes back as a ghost and decides to haunt them. I have been sampling through middle grade over the last few years and this one is definitely one of my favorites. I liked it for a few reasons. One being the fact that it's very different. I'm finding that in middle grade friendship is a really big theme and of course it is here in this book but I like the fact that this book actually shows the dark side of friendship which I don't normally see in middle grade. Normally you need to get into YA in order to deal with that but for any women out there I think we're all aware that mean girl behavior starts much earlier than people think. And so I like the fact that our main character and her group of friends are not innocent. They actually do some really terrible and hurtful things to this other girl. And while she is not a nice character, while she is kind of unpopular for reasons, they do terrible things to her and she does not deserve it. These are really not nice girls and I like the places that this book goes. In terms of the horror, it was not the most terrifying but more of a fun revenge story when you have this ghost causing all of this trouble. It's perhaps a little bit predictable in times but I still very much enjoyed the reading experience. And I should mention that of course this is historical horror which I really like because I don't read a lot of it but despite the fact that it's middle grade I like that it's sprinkled in some information about the political culture around World War One, as well as more information about the influenza and how it affected society. Schools were shut down and people were wearing masks and so forth. And I like those details brought into the story because it really gave the story a good sense of place. I'm definitely going to be reading more by this author because I was super impressed by her storytelling. And again, you can tell that even though this book is technically aimed at children, it certainly holds up for adults because I was completely engrossed in the story and would definitely recommend it to anyone who's open to reading middle grade. This one totally holds up. So that's it for this wrap up. Let me know down below which of the books you're most interested in and also tell me if there is a book, whether it be horror or another genre, that you have tried to read multiple times before you finally successfully read it and was it worth it. Otherwise, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. You can also help me out with a thumbs up, sharing this video around online, and if you're subscribed, you can hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.